Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Pulp Crazy. I'm your host, Jason Aiken. In this week's episode, I'm going to be discussing The Hounds of Tindalos by Frank Belknap Long, credited here as Frank Belknap Long Jr. The Hounds of Tindalos first appeared in the March 1929 issue of Weird Tales. The Hounds of Tindalos stands on its own as a quality weird tale, but H.P. Lovecraft later mentioned both the Hounds of Tindalos and the Doles in The Whisper in Darkness, two years later in the April 1931 issue of Weird Tales. The Hounds of Tindalos is now in the public domain, and it's readily available as both an e-text from Wikisource and a PDF scan from SFF Audio. I'll put links to both locations in the show notes. I want to thank Torin Atkinson for allowing me to use his illustration for the title card of this episode. I think Torin absolutely nailed what the creatures featured in the short story, The Hounds, look like. Torin is a talented jack-of-all-trades. He's an artist, actor, musician, and podcaster. Check out the show notes for links to his different endeavors. The Hounds of Tindalos actually features Frank Belknap Long himself as the narrator of the story. The short story chronicles Long's meeting with a friend of his, who is an occult writer named Halpin Chalmers. Chalmers is, for the lack of a better word, attempting to time travel by tapping into the fourth dimension. He uses both mathematical and spiritual means such as smoking an unknown drug, to attempt this. Chalmers asks Long to observe and record the experience for him. Although Chalmers doesn't physically leave the room, he is mentally able to access the fourth dimension and break the bonds of time. He eventually travels so far back in time that he arrives at the time of single-celled organisms. He then goes back even further, by means of what he describes as unearthly angles. When he journeys this far, his presence is noted by the titular Hounds of Tindalos, who get his scent. I won't go into any more detail than that, because this short story is readily available, and it's a short but enjoyable read. But that should give you an idea about what the Hounds of Tindalos is like. I was particularly fond of how Long combined geometry and spiritualism into this weird tale. He talks about different types of time, angular time and curved time, which plays a part in the story later on. Now besides the Hounds, another group of entities are mentioned, the Doles. Even less is said about them than the Hounds although they appear to be connected to the hounds in some fashion. Now, the hounds aren't really dogs. The name is meant to reflect their behavior rather than their appearance. And we're never told what exactly Tindalos is, whether it's a person or a place, during the course of this short story. Is it an ancient realm where the hounds come from? Is Tindalos their master? I'm sure other Mythos writers have addressed this since, but the only other appearance of the Hounds that I've read was in Pete Rollick's short story, Operation Starfish, in the anthology Kaiju Rising, Age of Monsters. Pete's story also used elements from the real-life paranormal phenomenon, The Battle of Los Angeles. It was an enjoyable short story as well. If you're a fan of the Cthulhu mythos, or just into classic weird tales in general, I think you owe it to yourself to read The Hounds of Tindalos by Frank Belknap Long. It's definitely worth it. And I'll put the links to it in the show notes. Well, that's it for this week's episode of Pulp Crazy. 
Pulp Crazy is located at pulpcrazy.com. I'm at Pulp Crazy on Twitter and facebook.com slash pulpcrazy. My YouTube channel is located at youtube.com slash pulpcast. You can also email me at pulpcrazy at gmail.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.